welcome everybody this is our, our our most recent episode of the hummingbird recordings uh this is the first time i'm actually on camera you're hearing my voice i'm andres fuentes i'm usually the editor but um i'm here with lorena the executive director of the uh immigrant alliance for justice and equity she's over there in the jackson office right now lorena how is it going this morning i know it, it's kind of hectic over there where you are yeah. right now what you're doing so good morning, everybody. I'm Lorena Quiroz. As Andres said, I'm the executive director. Um, but most importantly, I think like the lead organizer, because that's 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 just what I do. Um, but I actually was a little late, Andres. I, I I went to grab some donuts, and when I got here, I I, I shed a tear um, because everything was ready. And and it's usually um, Efren, who just you just met a minute ago, and I, and we are setting up. But when I got here, 10 minutes late, everything was set up. So um, yeah, it, 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 it made me emotional that they set up the stations. Um, so it's kind of like they got into their, their mode. We've been doing this for two weeks. Uh, DSA is here. We got Diane, um, our sister, who's been helping us for the last two years. We got some friends from Tougaloo, you know, Max and Jesus. So it's, we're very short staffed, but these are mostly volunteers. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's just beautiful. Um, you know, now we got a method, we pull everybody over, uh, we set up stations, uh, so that, you know, we don't cause if you see over there, um, when, um, when the cars come down, when the light turns green, what was happening was that we'd have a small little traffic jam. So what we did, we pull everybody over to the end, everybody at the station would just, um, they have a partner who opens up the door and then they they fill up your car and we don't have quotas you know we we'll put one in your car but if we see an elderly person someone who may need extra help somebody asks us uh, for more water we just give it to them um you know uh, as you i'm sure know like our, our latino community sometimes and in our black communities we share households and so it might be two or three households or nearby and, and why ask someone to come back and return when we have it right here we have this opportunity and so as you see diane there saying do you need some more and we just fill up their car um so it's 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 been it's been you know it's crazy it's like why the hell are we doing this but it's brought a sense of community over here and and um and folks are asking who are y'all you know we're the immigrant folks right here okay mm -hmm. So, and, yeah. and tell us, you know, if you want to flip your camera around, you can, but, you know, tell us a little bit about why you're doing this, what's going on in Jackson, what has led up to this? Uh, yeah, so, um, and I'm going to walk around our buildings. Um, so, you know, Jackson, Mississippi is a mostly black town. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> first step. Um, and uh, and now you know we're having a lot of uh, good morning, um, a lot of brown folks moving in. Uh, for the last fifty or sixty years, you know we've been suffering from disinvestment. Um, you know what you hear on the radio, I mean on the national news, you know might be contrary to what we are experiencing right here. E y eso es que por los últimos 50, 60 años no han invertido en la infra infraestructura in the infrastructure de esta ciudad y como ustedes ven estos de aquí the potholes i don't know if we i might take a little you know closer walk um is is evidence of the fact that we we have not had investment in in jackson mississippi um this occurred you know during um desegregation where we had a huge amount of folks that had uh, the wealth that had the income moved out of jackson uh, as more black folks came in, uh, white families started moving out, and so less money uh, started. Um, and, and, and it's almost like the governor or the folks in power have prevented us from receiving the aid that we need. Um, and so you will see, and this again, it, it's our building, but it's all over. The building, el edificio que está al frente, the building across the street, es evidencia de de cómo está esta ciudad, que es la capital. It's the capital of Mississippi that has where, if you see all those beautiful buildings, right, that, that could be like just vibrant with businesses, con negocios, um, que no, no, hay, 
no hay inversión en esta ciudad por la manera que, porque es una ciudad que es uh, mayoritariamente negra. Um, and so because of that, our water system, again, we've been having this problem for decades, uh, hasn't been, been invested in, and then we've been having a lot of, lot, lots of rain. And this is where the intersection of immigrant rights and climate, climate justice, right, happens. Uh, porque, you know, this amount of rain, um, the amount of, of heat um, that we are getting, it's been just um, just hotter than, and, and we have like the rapid evaporation, our Pearl River flooded, uh, leaving several families, black and brown families, um, perdiendo todo, they lost everything. Their homes, their, um, you know, all, all their belongings, um, some had babies, cribs, and then uh, the filtering system failed. El sistema eh, decayó y nos quedamos sin agua. Um, la presión de agua no existía en la mayoría de Jackson. There was no water pressure, water pressure in the majority of Jackson. Um, some areas had very low pressure, pero um, mucha de la comunidad latina no sabía lo que estaba pasando, por qué no hubo agua. Uh, uno de nuestros empleados eh, se mudó a Jackson, dijo, no me han prendido el agua, y no era eso, era que no había agua. No había agua aquí en West Jackson, South Jackson, lots of parts of North Jackson. Y después empezó a entrar el agua cruda. So raw water, um, it was looking brown, it, it, it didn't smell good. Como uno se puede imaginar, olía bien mal. Um, hay personas que reportaron um, que le estaban saliendo llagas en el cuerpo. There's some folks that reported uh, blisters on their, on their body. And, um, and then all hell broke loose. <laughs> but the thing is that uh, the Immigrant Alliance for Justice and Equity, la, la Alianza de, de Inmigrantes de Justicia y Equidad, ha sido parte de una coalición que ha existido más ya a dos años. Uh, we're part of this coalition that has existed for two years, and it's a Mississippi Rapid Response Coalition. So uh, to say that we were ready, um, you know, might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but we have been handing out water for the last two years. Uh, we have been uh, aware that we need to raise funds. And so in our offices, uh, and now in our new building, we've always had water. The, Ra the Rapid Response Coalition uh, is made up of about 30 organizations, including People's Advocacy Institute, One Boys, NAACP, Alternate Roots, um, just to name a few. Um, and we got on, on uh, we got together and we started raising funds. Ahorita tenemos um, eh, eh, dos maneras de, de recoger fondos, que es directamente a IAGE y también por medio de la coalición. Nosotros, la coalición, Uh, y claro, Yaje, que es parte de la coalición, fuimos los primeros en distribuir agua. Inmediatamente um, pusimos en diferentes, en, what you saw out there, what the media saw was Mississippi Rap Response and, and our distribution sites. Um, and then after we raised a lot of noise and, and the city saw the six distribution sites that we had, or maybe um, at different times, um, then they started distributing water. Then they started, you know, um, calling the attention. Uh, so I, this, esto es para decir, this goes to show the importance of community-based organization. La importante, la importancia de, de organizaciones que están en su comunidad a diario, que estamos poniendo atención, que nos dicen, oiga, ¿por qué no tengo agua? Right? Immediate, our reaction was immediate. Um, media, we got media attention between all of us. Um, Cassandra Welchin, uh, you know, who's part of the Black Women's Roundtable. We've been uh, talking to media and we got the word out. And now the city has, I believe, six Le Yaman mega sites because they have tons of water. They have pallets. Uh, we are just building that capacity. Um, you know, we just now um, filled up our warehouse with water. We were doing maybe 25. Now we have about 100 pallets. Um, estamos gastando dinero. Because we know that just like right now, this is trending. You know, ahorita estamos de moda, right? Eh, ahí es cuando entra el dinero. Nosotros lo que tenemos que es construir una infra, infraestructura para que cuando pase otra vez, porque va a pasar otra vez, estemos listos. 
Uh, so we are investing in buying uh, pallet, um, pallet jacks. Uh, we're trying to raise some funds to buy an actual forklift because, um, so actually a sister organization of yours, maybe Andres, um, uh, they, they lend us a forklift for about a week. And uh, I'm just going to show you, te voy a enseñar, yeah. uh, what we were able to do um, with that forklift in a week. Yeah, and it just looks like you know how many volunteers do you have just about every day how many people do you think you actually serve well, every day too well we give at least 20, 20 pallets a day oh. um and it's but now we got it down to tuesday and thursday and right now see today we have like the largest amount of volunteers last saturday we had at least 20 folks um we had the university of mississippi uh, Tougaloo's in the house, we had DSA, um, we had, um, I'm not sure who else was here, um, but uh, other colleges and there's just folks that just dropped by and um, and you see here. So we actually don't really have that many volunteers today um, for the amount of water that we were planning to give on Saturday. Um, but yeah, like you yeah, said, had, you know, this city really relies on these these small sites you know this is kind of like um COVID-19 vaccination sites where they set up different sites throughout communities yeah. in case the yeah. elderly or people without cars yeah. can easily access them so what you're doing is, is very important for not only the neighborhood but like you were saying you know some of the Spanish-speaking and immigrant communities over in Jackson right yeah yeah and now uh we we actually purchased a 6,000 square foot building that has enabled us to to hold the water, and I'm I'm about to show you again. So this is our building. Mm -hmm. um, e, and these are so yesterday that house que tú ves allá arriba uh, encontramos a diez personas latinas de Jackson, mostly Guatemalan, built putting that new roof on, and they're from Jackson. And we walked over there and we told them, you know what's going on? They're like, well, there's no water, and we had to explain to them. Tenemos un flyer que indica. Um, you know, por qué, que indica también qué es lo que no, no tomar agua, no cepillarse los dientes, no dar el agua, no mezclar el agua con fórmula. Y pudimos eh, brindarle, esto estaba lleno, estaba lleno ayer, lo llenamos todo, all of this was water, and it's empty now, all of this, all of this was water. So we, we, we need to refill. Um, uh, and uh, we do have another... A lot of space for a lot of water. <laughs> lots of space, a lot of space. Um, we have a lot of dreams and plans for this building, but right now what we're doing is, and this is our training space, uh, Efren, our, our organizer and emergency response person, all of this, he's received. The other day he was here till midnight, recibiendo, si tu ves los pallets de water, 18 wheeler came in, but we could not have done this without the help of a forklift. Mm -hmm. um, and we lost the forklift. They had to have it back because they just lend it to us. So we, we're going to buy it because si tu, si, si uno se pone a pensar, right? if we start thinking about um, this new system um, with this increased level of PSI, what is this? How is that going to affect our very ancient pipes, mm -hmm. our, our very ancient infrastructure that has not been updated? You know, ¿cómo va a afectar? Okay, estamos, un, estamos bien, hay presión. El agua se ve bien, pero todavía no han alzado la, no, la, la noticia de que debe hervir su agua. And so if you see here, this is going to go in a couple of days. As that yesterday, when I came yesterday, that other one was filled. And now this is going to be probably gone. So we're going to be doing it all over again. Um, but we're, estamos planeando para el futuro. So we're going to be collecting water. Um, something that was happening, people didn't have water to, to bathe. Mm -hmm. So we have these tanks here. We're going to have this to back up, back us up. We didn't lose complete pressure. Uh, so we're going to be building, vamos a construir uh, a bathroom, a shower, um, which we were told was a luxury because this is, this is a place of work. But it, it's a luxury where we can open it up to the community and, and, and you can have the dignity that you deserve, right? Water is, is dignity. Water is life. Uh, to be able to bathe, to bathe be able to, you know, come in, get some water. If, if, if you don't know what's going on, we send it, mandamos el mensaje por medio del WhatsApp. 
uh, recoger agua. We know right now the fire department was giving, uh, giving out water that you could take baths with, that you could, but we also want to make sure that when folks are not understanding or they're just maybe not trusting, porque sabe que nuestra comunidad todavía no le agarra confianza a la gente de, de uniforme, we, we're going to be here for them. Mm -hmm. Entonces estamos pensando qué más podemos hacer para mitigar, right, todo esto que está pasando y que va a continuar a pasar por, por, por el, el cambio de clima, que va a seguir bajando las temperaturas, que va a congelar las tuberías, que va a resultar en esta ciudad teniendo otra vez que parar al agua y comunidades y bloques enteros que van a quedar sin agua. Entonces, uno siempre tiene que pensar por lo menos tres años en el futuro a uh, cómo estamos, pero yo dijera que esto va a tomar por lo menos 10 años. Even, even if everybody, aunque todos, uh, city council, mayor, gobierno, national, it'll still take about 10 years to undo some of the harm that has been, um, that has been. Do we need to get someone to push? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Lorena, I know you're kind of busy. So, uh, you know, I guess to wrap things up, you know, what, what can people do to help you out? Uh, you know, volunteer wise or donation wise, how can people help out? Yes, volunteers, the more hands we have, the, 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 you know, the, the, the lighter the load, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right now we have, we only have about 10, 12 volunteers. Um, and it gets a little bit, thank goodness it's not so hot today. Last, last week it was nineties. We were sweating by then. Um, so volunteers definitely, especially on Saturdays um, and people that could be available in the evenings to help us unload. Uh, like we mentioned, Efren was here unloading with Cooper and, and, um, and Diane, you know, right there, a little bitty Diane <laughs> on helping unload that 18 wheeler last time. So volunteers, we need hands, we need people, we need community, que se vengan, vengan a ayudar a la comunidad latina, si pueden venir una o dos horas, y usualmente son los lunes y miércoles that we can use to help with unloading, and then jueves y martes, Tuesday and Thursday, with the um, distribution. Y, and, and of course, the donations, uh, we're accepting donations, uh, Cash App, which is a viaje of MS, um, but we also have an act blue link that um, I can share with you a little later on. Mira que belleza. That's why everybody asks us what we are. Esta es una mujer indígena. Um, y aquí el trabajador uh, que cruzó la frontera. Um, lo que no se ve quizás es el carga ahí los sacrificios de todos, los sueños de toda su familia. Y claro, la... La mariposa monarca, que significa migración, right? Que es, que es lo que nosotros usamos um, para representar que la migración es bella. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. es it's bella. really cool to see that the office really, you know, come to light. It's really become a center, you know, something yeah. that you've always dreamed about. So it, it, it's really heartwarming. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, we're so excited. We're so excited. Um, and yeah, we're at 406 West Fortification. If you guys want to send things like diapers, uh, we have period poverty here, so feminine products, um, ready-made formula. Those are things that we can definitely receive. Uh, wipes, baby wipes. If you guys want to send us packages at 406 West Fortification in Jackson, Mississippi, and then the donation of the AgBlue account. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We are uh, Yahe of MS. Um, the name is Instagram, the name is Twitter. Um, y tenemos un website, uh, pero también tenemos our Mississippi Hummingbird recordings, um, where you hear the stories of everyday heroes uh, lifted up, and uh, yeah, so. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Lorena, for, for taking time out of your busy Saturdays nowadays, but uh, we'll definitely keep in touch, and you know, we'll, we'll keep doing this, updating the community as much as we need to, so this won't be the last time we do something like this, but awesome. thank you so much. Gracias, entonces, Andrés. Cuídate. Ah,